but I can't play a single pop song because I never practiced. No, I never practiced. In fact, the only time I ever practice is when I'm procrastinating. Which is why I decided to make a video on the 10 things you can do to make sure that your business fails. What is up, side hustlers, entrepreneurs, business builders, and dream makers? Welcome to the Sell Your Side Hustle Podcast, episode 86. Today we're talking about 10 things you can do to make sure that your business fails, which also means that all you need to do to make sure your business is successful is reverse these 10 things and do the opposite. So let's get into it. Number one, tell nobody about what you're doing. If you never tell anybody what you're doing, then your business never becomes real, which means you can keep building things and you can keep tinkering and you can keep uh, being productive and excited about this dream without ever making a penny. And as soon as you tell somebody about what you're doing, the fear is now it's real. The concern is if you don't tell people, nobody knows and nobody's ever going to buy your product, good or service. So the only option is tell people what you're doing. Number two, keep making new offers. If every single day, every single week, every single month, you're making a brand new offer, then what's going to happen is you're never going to get dialed in on a marketing strategy that allows that offer to truly shine. And there is some element to which you want to test different offers with your market, but you don't want to have an entirely different product, an entirely different core service. You don't want your audience confused about what you do because you're constantly bombarding them with completely different offers. This is a great way at staying busy without ever being truly productive. Number three, stop doing what works at different points in your business and all sorts of different facets. It's gonna, this is going to have to do with workflow. It's going to have to do with marketing. It's going to have to do with hiring. If you end up hiring people, it's going to have to do with customer relationships and interact and communication. It's going to have to do with all sorts of things in your business. But what you're going to see time and time again is that you try something out you see good evidence that it's successful, and then you don't continue doing it. If you want to make sure that your business fails, then stop doing what you know works. Number four, prioritize being busy over being productive. It's very easy to find a busy work that feels good because it's something that we enjoy doing. It's kind of in our wheelhouse. It feels like something where we can show people, hey, this is what I did today, but it's not actually needle moving. So a good example of this would be if you spend all day redesigning your website, which already existed, instead of telling people what you do. And that's a great way that you can keep yourself stuck and never be successful for years and years and years. Because again, you're convincing yourself that you're busy and you're growing a business, but you're doing things that are just busy work and that are not needle movers. Number five, take advice from the wrong people. Now, there's a ton of people in your life who are not business owners. They're not entrepreneurs, but they love you. They care about you. They want what's best for you. And as a result, they're going to be constantly trying to give you unsolicited advice on what you should do financially, on what you should do with your business, on whether or not you should keep going. And the reality is those aren't the people you should be taking advice from in that sphere of life. Now, it is the case that those people in your life are in your life for a reason. And there probably are plenty of areas of, of life where they can give you good advice and you should listen to them. However, if they haven't had success in the path that you're on, then they can't give advice on that path. Somebody who's never been rich cannot give you good financial advice. Someone who has never been a successful entrepreneur cannot give you good entrepreneurial advice. So take advice from people who have fruit on the tree in the avenue that they are giving the advice in. Number six, give up on something in less than six months. Whether that's an offer, whether that's a marketing campaign, whether that's the business model itself and you're just trying a new business model, if you give up in less than six months, then you never really tried in the first place. You should be dedicating five years to a pathway and you should be dedicating sufficient time, resources, money, energy to each and every avenue. You have no idea whether or not what you're doing works until you've put in sufficient sweat equity, which takes time, dedication, and grit. So don't give up on anything in less than six months because six months isn't enough time to know whether or not you're any good at it, let alone whether or not it's worth being good at. Give up in less than six months, it's a great way of staying for. Number seven, be a consumer, not a producer. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you're watching videos like this or listening to this podcast, are you reading books like my book? There's nothing wrong with that. So long as you're also implementing. 
as long as you're actually doing things, you're actually taking the advice and you're actually trying to grow and you're not spending all day consuming content without implementing anything that you learn. Producers still consume content. I produce content. I make a ton of YouTube videos. I make a ton of social media content. I wrote a book this year. Even though I produce a ton of content, I still consume content. So I'm not saying don't consume content. You can also see in the video, if you're watching video, my one of my bookshelves, I have multiple bookshelves. I have a pretty large library. I read a lot. So I'm not saying stop consuming, but don't only consume. So maybe that means you need to dial your consumption back and you need to actually put things into practice. Number eight, prioritize comfort over growth. This is an easy one to do. It's an easy one to fall into because growth sucks. Becoming better at something is hard and it's painful and it's embarrassing and it's humiliating and it's slow and it's a grind. And as a business owner, you don't often have someone who's going alongside you side by side, who's pushing you forward, who's been there, done that, and knows you're on the right path. And is going to say, yeah, even though this sucks, you forge ahead. Athletes get that. Business owners don't tend to get that. So what we need to learn as business owners is to actually prioritize growth over comfort. When something sounds hard, it sounds miserable, we don't want to do it. That alone is actually a good reason to consider doing it. Let me give you an example. I just built an MVP that is specifically designed so that I can do cold calling because I realized that the products and services that I have don't make sense in my brain for something that I could cold call people for. So I made something that I could so that I can cold call people. Why? Because I want to get better. I want to grow. I want to be the kind of person who can pick up the phone and make a hundred calls when I need a paycheck because that's what it's gonna take when cold calling. And I wanna have that skill in my back pocket. I wanna be a better asset to my business. So I am prioritizing growth over comfort. And I'm expecting this to be one of the most brutal, miserable experiences of my life. And I'm going to do it. Nine, lower your prices. You do not want to be somebody who's competing on price. It's a great way to lower your margins, to get you to lower your profit. It's a great way to lower your audience's perspective of you, the market's perspective of you. You're turning yourself into a cheap product in the eyes of your consumers. And yeah, you're going to get a couple people who buy because you lowered your prices. And what's going to end up being the result is that those people are highly price sensitive, which makes them the worst clients that you've ever had. And the most likely to leave no matter what you do anyway, because they are simply looking for the cheapest price. They're not loyal to you whatsoever. Lowering your price is an easy way to make every aspect of your business harder, which also increases your probability of just closing up shop all together. And finally, number 10, decide that XYZ is beneath you. And XYZ here is any marketing strategy, uh, any business uh, development strategy that you know works, but you believe is beneath you. For example, uh, that cold calling example that I mentioned earlier, a lot of people believe that cold calling is beneath them. And so they'll outsource it or they will give it to a team member, even though they've never done it themselves, and they will simply not do it at all, which means they never get good at it, which means they never develop good SOPs to hand it off to somebody successfully. And whoever they have do it is never successful at it either. So instead of deciding that this thing is beneath me, which, hint, that's not actually why you do that. People don't actually put off tasks like that because they believe it's beneath them. They put off tasks like that because they're actually afraid of it. And then it's beneath me is the excuse they use to justify it to themselves. So instead, you actually do the hard thing. You develop those SOPs, you get the systems in place, and then you train somebody on it by leading by example. Just to recap, those 10 things are, number one, tell nobody what you're doing. Number two, keep making new offers all the time. Number three, stop doing what you know works. Number four, prioritize busy over productive. Number five, take advice from, pe from the wrong people. Number six, give up in six months or less. Number seven, be a consumer, not a producer. Number eight, prioritize comfort over growth. Number nine, lower your prices. And number 10, decide that XYZ is beneath you. Those are 10 surefire ways to make sure your business fails. So if you want 10 surefire ways to make sure your business success is successful, simply reverse that. Five, telling everybody what you're doing often. Stick with one core offer. Keep doing what works. Prioritize productive over busy. Take advice from the right people. Don't give up 
for at least five years. Be a producer and a consumer. Prioritize growth over comfort. Raise your prices or at least keep them the same. Recognize that nothing is beneath you as the business owner. Do those things and your business will be more successful. That's what I got for you guys today. We'll be back in your butts again soon. Love y'all. God bless.